Hello, I'm Anthony Devanza from Tampa, Florida. Uh, lived here, oh, in the 70s uh, with an old friend who's a doctor of chiropractic and rolfing, Barry Nutter. And about two months ago, I put an ad on Facebook looking for a job as a personal chef. He said, come on over. I live in Kahala with a lot of good clients and probably we can make a film and get you going here. So here I am. And I'm originally from New Orleans. I learned to cook from my mom, two grandmothers and aunts and uncles, and I cook a lot of New Orleans food. And uh, I do some Spanish food, some Cuban food, and Italian. I'm Italian. My family is from Naples and Palermo. I learned to cook from my mom. Had a couple of restaurants in Tampa, one called Salinas, the other Cafe Creole. Very popular restaurant and still pretty well remembered today. So today I'm going to prepare a Creole gumbo as opposed to a Cajun gumbo, which is much spicier and thinner, no okra. They use filet for a little thickening, make almost a dark black roux. But I'm going to make a Creole gumbo. It's more of an orange color with a nice roux. We've got shrimp and smoked sausage is going to go in it. We're also going to make some flan brulee, which is a creation of mine. Uh, a more simple version of cream brulee. Basically a flan where cream is added rather than just milk and eggs. And uh, we have that going for you too. And then we can make some crab cakes, Louisiana crab cakes, which are loaded with chunks of shrimp. And we'll show you how to make all of those. And so let's get started. Okay, before we get to the gumbo, I want to show you some prepared uh, Flan boule, a creation of mine. I mentioned earlier, the only difference from cream boule is it has real cream rather than just milk and eggs and caramel. So I actually went ahead and made it up. Uh, you beat the eggs, you have uh, two whole eggs, three, three egg yolks, and two whole eggs. You beat that up first with some sugar, let it set, and then you take cream and milk and scald it with more sugar and vanilla in it. And as soon as it comes to a little simmer, you turn it off and let it cool. Whip the egg mixture in with the vanilla. And now we have it cool and we're ready to put it in the oven. And I want to get it good at going first because it takes a little while to cook. And then to cool in the, in the refrigerator. So let me get all of this going. We're making about a three ounce cup and about a four ounce cup. Okay, that's all in there. Now we'll get to the gumbo. Hot oil here. You can use a peanut oil, a canola oil. This happens to be a little olive oil. I'm going to add some various colored red bell pepper here. And that goes in. And then we have some celery. And that goes in. And a little onion. And we'll let that cook for a little bit. Let me turn the heat up here. And stir it around a little. You want to cook it till the onions start to car caramelize. Just get a little bit brown. And then when the, that's done, we'll add some smoked sausage some shrimp, and uh, let that cook. We have some flour to add to it. Uh, basically, that's the root. Uh, our, our flour is going to be cooked like a peanut butter color. Uh, some people make a dark root. Occasions like a very dark, almost a black gumbo, and much thinner. We have a stock already made from the shrimp heads here. Oh, we got shrimp heads in here, where all the flavor is. More celery, parsley, garlic, onions, and Old Bay seasoning. And that's the, really the, the heart of the gumbo. So we'll let this brown for a little bit and give it a little stir. 
The Cajun food, different from the city of New Orleans food, is made their own way. It's always much hotter. Louisiana food, New Orleans food, has never been hot. Never. People believe it hot because it started with the blackening craze. A man by the name of Paul Prudhomme, big fella, about 400 pounds. Uh, he had a Cajun kitchen, he called it. Paul's Cajun kitchen in New Orleans, in the French Quarter. I luckily cooked with him a couple of times. He came to Tampa, to Tampa University on the grounds, and had an outdoor festival. And uh, at that time, I had a restaurant called Cafe Creole. So they asked me to come cook with Paul. And uh, I probably made crab cakes and gumbo there. Uh, then I got to cook with him again at Bush Gardens. They came up with a, a new ride. They called it the Ramblin' Bayou. It was a fast, like on a raft, you go through all this jungly looking stuff. And Paul was cooking there again. And again, the same people called me from a TV station and asked me if I'd cook with Paul. I said, of course, I came and cooked red beans and rice at that event. So we became a bit of friends and, you know, got along very well. Uh, his wife was always there too, although unbelievably, she was skin and, skin and bone, married to a big heavy guy. But they're very nice people. They're real Cajuns from Opelousas, Louisiana, which is dead center in Creole, excuse me, Cajun country. So that's my experience, you know, with those guys. And uh, a lot of fun to cook with, very nice people. This is starting to get going here. I'm going to drain this uh, stock and have it ready to put in the gumbo. So now we have a stock. Tastes as good as the gumbo, maybe a little better. Want to taste this, cameraman? That's the stock. Mm -hmm. Not bad? Good. Okay. Let's get this cooking up here. We're going to put in the Cajun sausage. Smoked. Get that brown a little bit. You can also add chicken to this. I often cook the chicken ahead of time, save all the juices. But I don't have the chicken today. <coughs> I'm going to put a little tomatoes. Give it a little color and taste. Put that into it. The other bell pepper is for my crab cakes, which we're going to do in a bit. There's the garlic. Can't cook much anything without garlic. I had a friend quite a few years ago told me he was allergic to garlic and onions. I said, well, what the hell do you eat? I wouldn't know what to eat. Stock's going to go in. Put part of it in, see if we can need some more. Turn it back up. We're going to bring this to a boil before we add our flour. A Cajun uh, Old Bay seasoning. This is actually from Baltimore. I didn't have Cajun seasoning, but it's very close. So we have that in there. This is the garlic breadcrumb. Oh, there's some bay leaves. Let me see if we got some bay leaves in here already. And it's starting to boil a little bit. These are whole bay leaves. Put about three of them in there. And remember, no filet. 
people ask you about that. That's called filet gumbo, the Cajun style. So we don't quite do it that way. We do it a little different. I <laughs> had a Cajun girl named Amanda Bennett help me out. We did a lot of festivals and special events at Cafe Creole. Had Cajun bands come in, have an all-night party, whole pigs roasting, bourbon, yam, casserole, dirty rice, and uh, she always criticized me. Well, that's not how we do it in Lafayette, Louisiana. I said, well, how do you like it? Well, it's good. I said, well, okay. Okay, we're getting going here. I'm thinking to put a little flour in here. Just half water, excuse me, half oil, peanut oil, canola oil. Here we got some olive oil. Now this is going to be the thickening agent. Yep, still smells good. I guess if it doesn't smell good, you got a problem. There we go. The last thing we're going to put in is the shrimp, unless we feel we need these are head-on shrimp, where I got the heads from, from Tomashiro's Market. Very good price. And uh, gee, I think I paid $6.90 for a whole pound, which is a really good price. And they've been deveined. I split them down the back. And the very last thing, We'll put them in, and then some scallions and parsley. And then we'll taste it, see if it came out good. This is some thyme leaves, as opposed to powdered thyme. So we're going to put a little bit of that in. With whole leaf thyme. And on the crab cakes, take a peek in the oven, seeing what's happening with the flan. The flan should cook at about 325 with about, till it gets a little tan crust on it. And you take it out, let it cool. Uh, it's in a water bath, uh, in a big pan in the oven. And when it gets a little brown on top, we'll take them out and let them start cooling. Chop a little parsley. That goes in the gumbo in the end. Put in the parsley. Give that a little stir. The rest of the stock is going to go in. Before we put the shrimp, we're going to put in some uh, green onions. We'll cut off the ends. I can hear those shrimp complaining because they want to get in the pot too. Probably don't believe that, but Cajuns believe a lot of weird shit. There we go. We're going to let that sit a little while. Let's let the flavors bend. Put that on the back burner. We're going to start with them um, uh, again. In Louisiana, you can get claw meat. You can get the special meat, which is just a body meat. You can get lump. You can get jumbo lump. This is lump meat from Tamashiro's. The only place in town I think you can find this. So that's the lump meat. Nice and sweet. I think this was eight ounces here. Nine dollars. A little pricey. Gonna <clears throat> beat up a couple of eggs in there. We're going to take some of these leftover shrimp, and my crab cakes always have some shrimp in them. So, 
wash my hands a little bit here. Dicey shrimp. You can see that, they're just smaller dice. <clears throat> Cook those first. Not much cooking to be done on the crab cakes. Which I mix in some Parmesan cheese, which I have already grated. Uh, some beaten eggs, the shrimp, the parsley, the bell pepper, and just turn it off and blend in the flavors. There's the bell pepper. And then some butter there. I'm going to add a little bit more of the Old Bay seasoning. And yeah, we'll put a few more shrimp in here. When I was a kid growing up in New Orleans, there was a place out on the lakefront, Lake Pontchartrain, which is a brackish water lake. That was full of restaurants on stilts over the water, and they made what they call a stuffed crab. Same thing we're doing here, except they stuffed it into the shell. So, I did that originally at Selena's restaurant. <laughs> and some obnoxious guy from the health department said, I can't use the crab shells. I said, what are you talking about? Because I buy them a thousand at a time from a guy who processes them. No, you can't do it. You got to process your own. Say, I'm going to go catch my own crabs and process them. Are you crazy? So he wouldn't let up. So I stopped making stuffed crab, the same recipe, and made crab cakes. Lo and behold, <laughs> they sold twice as good as just the crab cakes, as just as the stuffed crab. So I had the knucklehead from the health department to thank. Add some parsley to this too. Then the crab meat. Put a few scallions in there. This is the first video I've ever made, not ever, I did them before in Tampa on uh, radio shows. They would call me in what they call drive time to prepare some food and film it. They always went well. I'm going to put a little bit of breadcrumbs in here. Not too much. Maybe about four tablespoons. So all of this goes into the bowl. With the lump crab meat. And I have some Parmesan cheese. Already grated. This is the, the Italian addition to New Orleans cooking. You know, it's called Creole cooking today. It's made up of five different cultures. The French, which came to Louisiana from Canada after the French, the British and French war in Canada. Uh, the German people, believe it or not, the Indians of Louisiana, Italians, who am I forgetting? Spanish. They wouldn't be happy if I left them out. So there's five different cultures over the last 150 years that have created what is today called New Orleans Creole cooking. Old Bay seasoning. And the last thing is a little bit more parsley. And the eggs. Let me get a couple of eggs here. One egg. Two eggs. It's 
Silas, can we post the actual recipes on the film? Post the actual recipes on the film. The exact recipes for people? Yeah, underneath, underneath the film. Okay. So we'll do that. So there goes the parsley. And what I'm going to do with this <clears throat> in just a moment is put it in the refrigerator. Because the cold crab cake mix stays together, makes a nice crab cake when it's cold. So we're going to do that too, I think. Let's see. So I'm going to put this in the fridge. Now we got to take out the flan. I had a, here we go. <clears throat> Little hot pad here. See, it's just slightly brown on the top. I'll show you a little solidified. See? And it'll really get nice and solid when you let it really cool down. Okay. So now we gotta fry some crab cakes. That came out good. You ready? Yeah. Okay, we let the uh, crab cake mixture cool a little bit. Not as much as we want, but we've got hungry people here. So I usually use about a half cup round measure, put it in there, pack it in. But I'll just do this with my hands because my cup measures are not round. Okay. So it's pretty easy here. Can you give me one of those flat plates sitting there? You set it down there? Okay, there's some guests that come in to try the gumbo. They're going to try the crab cakes in a little bit, but I'll let them come in on the gumbo. Let oh, me very try. Good. Yes. Let me try. I'm ready, I'm ready to start singing the song of Billy Gumbo. Wow. There you go. Because tonight we're going to No, that's a wow. I'm trying to find more words, but it's wow. The best word is yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. my God. And the crab cake. Oh, this is the crab cake? Yeah. Okay. And I guess it's another wow. Wait. Wait, wait. Mm. Oh my god, it's even better. I like it. I oh always god. have trouble with people from Maryland. Really? I'm from Maryland. I said, I oh, know, you got great crab cakes. Eat one of mine. I always say this. No, I never taste something like this. If it's not as good like or this. better, it's free. <laughs> I gave one away over 20 years to right. somebody from New York. Okay. Pain in the ass from New York. Mm. They gotta be right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my first. First crab cake? First. 
Unbelievable. Really, this is my first. I've never tasted something like this. Mm. Wow. Okay. Wow. I'm going to get you, the cameraman, a crab cake. Is that all right? Yeah. I usually serve them with tartar sauce, but I didn't take the time to make it. 